Hi, my name is Trisha Ikwamba. I'm known as Trisha Bees. You're watching Top Niger Stories with Isaac. Keep watching. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. So I am Trisha. Uh, the surname is long, so I just put bees <laughs> from somewhere. <laughs> so it's Trisha E. Um, and official, I have done consulting like all my life. Um, so I, I worked as a consultant and in some organizations over the last um, 11 years. So I've consulted for over 10 um, Fortune 100 companies here um, and it's cut across digital marketing, experiential marketing, public relations, some advertising, PR, um, Bluetooth marketing, like any kind of marketing. Um, I've tried to understand what it is. Um, for me then it was basically, I'm very restless. So HR is to call me flight risk. Um, sometimes to get some jobs I have to take out some of my some of the past places I worked so that they could, <laughs> they wouldn't see the, <laughs> um, the movement. And I would never have guessed that all of that was leading me somewhere. For me, it was just, I wanted to learn. I wanted to apply myself. Um, so my last job was in 2017. And I'd gotten to that point again where been there, done that. Um, and if you worked across a couple of multinationals, it's the same thing we do across markets. It's just a different culture. <laughs> so, and I was quite frustrated there because I was working on a global brand. And when you work on global brands, you cannot create in your local country. Um, it's always off-brand strategy. It's this, is that. You have to do this. But it does not work in this market. Um, but they don't care. That is what glo um, Global wants and we have to do it. Um, so I was looking for what next? Do I go to another multinational or what exactly? And I stumbled on a report. So Smedan had done some reports in collaboration with National Bureau of Statistics um, on entrepreneurship in Nigeria. It's like 70 pages. I don't, even know, I don't know what I was searching for online and I found it. And I began to read about it. And there was a number I saw there that struck me. Um, it says there was about 32 million micro, small, and medium enterprises in Nigeria as of 2013. One. Two of that number, about 90 something percent are micro, not even small. Medium businesses were not even up to 100,000. Um, and they listed a couple of reasons why many of them were still micro businesses. I'm like, this is jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this was around March 2017. Um, at the beginning of the 2017, I had just been playing with Instagram. I didn't know what Instagram was. <laughs> so I was just playing with it. I was putting out some content about business. Um, I got one or two clients here and there um, while I was still working. Um, but when I saw this report, I'm like, OK, this is the next challenge that I'm going to hop on. Um, so to help me land softly, I looked for who I thought was the best coach then. Um, and I paid him to understand how coaching worked. Because I had no clue. I'd done 95 all my life. Um, so he put me through. It was really amazing, Steve Harris. Um, he put me through. I understood. And I asked him about pricing and all those kind of things. Um, but all of the feedback I got, and I spoke to a couple of other coaches, all the feedback I got did not help me solve the problem of the micro guys. So when I ask them about fees, I hear plenty zeros. And, you know, just charge, this is what we charge, you know, because you have a lot of knowledge, you need to position yourself. But those guys cannot afford it. Um, so I, I struggled for a bit on how to position myself and help. Because I really wanted to impact, even though, of course, I, I'd make some money um, in the process, but I just wanted to help them. Um, so I found my mojo. Um, and it was deviating from the norm. I stumbled on webinars. And that was how. So my first webinar was 3,000 there. <laughs> and I had like 200, I think I'd made 450,000 in like 48 hours. Um, from 33k, you know, so I've just, yeah, so I've just grown from there and seen how I can help micro 
businesses get bite-sized information because uh, again there's lots loads of information out there that's not relevant for their current business phase uh, because I have served several organizations I understand um, marketing or branding or sales that works for different um, types of organizations so I have brought all that um, into Trisha B so yeah if okay. I was not sure that was going to work out, but one thing I know is I'm not unemployable. If my business falls up today, I'll get a job in two weeks. And it's not to brag. I'm very sure of what I know. Um, so I knew that if it didn't work, no issues. I'll dust my flight CV back <laughs> and go and look for um, a job somewhere. Plus, a couple of my past employers have gone on to establish their own consulting firms. And some, till date still, are looking to poach me back to work for them and own shares in their company so i know that somehow i'll get a job uh, first was like i said i got a coach to understand what happened um the second thing was i tried to identify okay so what am i what am i very good at what do i want to teach i've taught most of my life um in secondary school i was a lesson teacher to raise funds during <laughs> during holidays so um somehow formally informally i've always taught um my mom is a teacher i always said god forbid i'll never be a teacher but hey i ended up being <laughs> a teacher she makes she makes fun of me till date um but it was because there weren't any, there weren't any much she was a primary school teacher so i'm like no i know that i want to have a helicopter and i'm not sure this is your salary <laughs> can fetch it for me um so i identified the things that i was um strong at teaching marketing sales business growth um, and i created products out of them so i wrote a book in my second month in business smart kitten um so i came up with a book, I so I tested all the different products. I tested um, audio courses, I tested webinars, I tested online coaching, I tested one-on-one, -on -one. like I t any product that they told me I could use to monetize my knowledge, I tested it all um, in 2017 until I understood, okay, these are the channels that they learn better off and these are the ones that are not so stressful for me. That was one. Then the second thing that I told myself was, I know that people just need to hear me to know that I have knowledge. So how will they hear me? Um, so for all of 2017 and half of 2018, I was teaching every Wednesday for free on Instagram. I just wanted people to join. Um, so I started with 20 something um, joiners, viewers, and it's grown all the way into the thousands um, over the months. So every Wednesday, at first it was 8 p.m., now it's 9 p.m. I'll be there, except I was dying. I was there every Wednesday. Um, and then I formed alliances with people who had some sort of community and audience. Um, so in my past life, I'd used two influencers to influence for the company I worked for. So now I'm like, hello, you owe me a favor. Hi, <laughs> I'm back here. And they were very kind. Um, to help me, to put me up on their pages. So I went to teach, I went to, so on one of them is Nanja Branchik. I went and taught on her page that day and I gained like 2,000 followers. It was like magic. Like when I was done, it's like they just followed me and they were just following. I'm like, is this how it happens? Oh, interesting. Um, so I was, I was a frequent teacher on her page and yes, and her audience became used to me and somehow they migrated. I did that across um, a couple of platforms. So those were some of the things. I did. Plus, I was running away from everything in my personal life. So I put all my energy into work. So I was working like maybe 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. Wow. Like, really? yes. So all the energy, I threw it um, in there. So maybe <laughs> that also adds. Uh, it's not healthy, though. Two things. One is I'm giving value. Two is I'm giving value at their level of awareness. So um, I took time to understand what language they would um, they would get the more 
Um, so the average teacher is just doling out knowledge on their own level of awareness. And then your audience really don't get what you're saying. Um, and because business is complex one, two, most of the, not most, like a lot of the um, Nigerian entrepreneurs that I serve, they never had nine to fives. So they're new to, they don't understand corporate culture, they don't understand governance, they don't understand nothing. It's either they're frustrated of looking for a job and they jumped into it or they've been housewives and now they want to empower themselves and they go and entrepreneurship is the next best thing. So they have absolutely no clue. So when you are teaching, like you're speaking to people who have had this experience before, it's two different audiences. Um, so I teach in very basic terms. So half the time, if you go through comments on my page, you see things like, oh, I didn't know it was this easy. Oh, thank you for breaking it down. Well, now I get it. So I know that, okay, this is one way. So that has helped a lot. So people keep sending their um, entrepreneurial friends to my page. Like, if you want to understand it, like, they break it like we're in primary school. You go to um, Trisha. So it's not like they're they are not intelligent. They are highly intelligent people, but in the field of business, they need to be served in different blocks and build them all the way. I try to teach with relatable examples. So for instance, um, if I want to teach a business strategy, um, instead of just going straight and saying, oh, business strategy is diversification, you should diversify into another industry. I'll give you an example. For instance, you're currently selling shoes. You can decide that, oh, instead of only selling shoes, we can add on this. So it's examples they understand in English that they can also understand. Um, I think that's like the major thing because half the time my content is copied, but I don't see the same engagement on platforms that copy, like copy my, my content word for word. Um, sometimes or just copy the way I write um, but I put myself into it so sometimes I use some kind of um, words that if it's not Trisha you, they, they don't they don't yes yes um, so I'll, I'll say it's that and then giving it consistently so I never think that oh I'll run out of content or I'm giving too much so when I put out a paid class they won't pay um, and that's the mentality of some, some teachers. Um, I feel like there's, like business is so diverse that I can give free content for five years and I'll still earn. Um, and I also try to keep improving myself and learning because there's new things that come into this space every other day. Um, so yes, yeah, consistent content that is given at an, a level of awareness um, of my audience and relating it to them. So for me, um, I'm very, so there's somebody I call Uncle HS. I'm very Uncle HS led. Uncle HS means Uncle Holy Spirit. Um, so I just wake up and get ideas and I go and execute. Um, so sometimes I can't really say that, oh, this was what I did. Um, but I know that there was a progression. So I started giving everything free. Um, I did free for maybe three months. So I did a physical class free in Lagos, Port Harcourt, Benin, Abuja. I was expending my own money and going to, yes. Because I'm of the opinion that you just need to hear me once and I'll get that my money back from you because you come and pay me. Um, so I launched out Trisha Bays with the free um, sessions. Now I had a friend then who had a network of entrepreneurs so she emailed my free class to them and the classes were full so she had like 2,000 women in her in her network and I was volunteering to teach in her network then um, so I volunteered to teach in a couple of female entrepreneurial networks I was teaching every week on whatsapp in some of these um, networks and then half of the people won't show up so I'll be there I'm like hello it's time for class hey guys where are you you know and to me, I was even excited that maybe five people joined me in a group of 200 or 150. Um, so I did all that free, and people were executing the little things I was telling them and seeing some level of result here and there. Um, and then after a while, I just knew that, okay, it was time to start earning. One thing that I did in 2017 was I, I attended every physical event I was invited to. 
Because again, my mantra then was people just needed to hear me. So if you invited me for your conference, workshop, etc., I don't even ask for transport. I'll show up. And when I'm done, I'll drive myself back. Um, so all of those helped me. So in 2018, when I sat down to create the business strategy, I knew that, okay, free was off the list. I would only do free if it was like a give back um, conference or event where nobody was being charged. And this was one to empower. Um, but if it's a paid event, I'm not coming for free. So I began. To, I now began to put in um, some steps and say, okay, to do this, this is what I'll do. But I really can't say, okay, this was the turning point. The truth, and I've never said this anywhere else. My first webinar, I needed money to flee Nigeria, right? Um, at that point, I had, I think, maybe 50,000 Naira in all my Naira accounts. I only had money in my dollar account, and I could not access it. I needed to buy a ticket to leave Nigeria. That was November 2017. So I asked myself, what can I do? And I put out a webinar, 3,000 Naira. In was it 24 or 32 hours, I had 450k. I bought a Royal MRO ticket to leave Nigeria and I left the next day to the US and I was there for three months. Um, so it was out of the fact that I needed money and then I realized like, oh, webinar can bring money. It was called How to Sell Like a Pro One. And when I got to the US, I settled, sorted myself. I launched How to Sell Like a Pro Two. <laughs> And that's how it has gone. So I stumbled into it because I needed funds to leave the country. And I, right, and I realized that I am but one person. And if scaling will need to happen, then I need to look at how to work with other people who also have knowledge, but either they're not in their, they're not known, or even if they're known, the knowledge is not relevant or they are not accessible price-wise to the micro and small um, business owners. So then it was just like, I wanted to just expand on Trisha Biz and see how to consolidate all my success so far. Um, so I dabbled with different ideas and finally I landed on the name Business Lab Africa. Um, it wasn't for me, it was the team, like two people on the team. Somebody came up with Lab, my own, and then Yox came up with Business Lab. So anyway, uh, we mar we make, married it together. Um, so Business Lab Africa basically is an online training platform, right? Um, so back to that report from 2017, the average entrepreneur lacks business knowledge, right? La they lack it seriously. And it's not just a Nigerian thing, it's an African thing. One, um, two, they're unable to afford it at the price that it currently um, is being offered at. And it's not a disrespect to the teachers, it's just that they cannot afford it. Um, now, for those who can afford, even where you find some knowledge that is affordable on some international platforms, the strategies are not skewed to doing business in Africa which is a total ball game. Like, as simple as Facebook ad targeting, they say there are different things. There are some um, metrics that are not tracked in Nigeria. You know, like based on income, which income, who, who? You know, so um, I decided that I wanted to create a platform that answered all of that. A platform that provided quality content at a price entrepreneurs could afford and the knowledge was skewed to doing business in Africa. So that is basically what BLA is. So we, we bring together very amazing experts who have trained around the world, teaching on topics that are their core. So like when it was just me, I was teaching on everything. I, I know them, but some of them are not my core. Um, so here, it has to be your core for you to come on BLA. Um, so we have trainers teaching every month and then we have learners who subscribe every month. So it's a monthly subscription-based online school. You can decide to subscribe every month or just, okay, I just want to learn what you're offering this month and then you can go and execute it and come back when you have funds for the next one. But you just know that there's a platform 
where I can go to and get the knowledge I need. Um, and what we also did was we created two subscription plans because even though some businesses are small, but they are established. So we have the startup plan for those who are just starting and coming up and then they established. We've been there for a while now, we're established, but we need to expand, scale or grow, etc. So there are different courses taught to the different um, subscription plans based on where we think they are in the level of business. Um, so yeah, that's Business Lab Africa.